Hello folks, this is Nathan and welcome to Not Ballycastle. This is not Ballycastle in the background. It is Ballycastle in the background. Hope you enjoy that. And uh, what I want to do is um, speak a little bit about understanding the evangelical churches. And uh, the theme of tonight is the simple religion, something along those lines. And what I want to do is make a series of videos which uh, are aimed at Bible-believing Christians within evangelical churches, particularly in Northern Ireland, but by no means limited to that circle, who are concerned about the state of the churches here and elsewhere. And it can be perplexing, and um, what I have in mind is, among other, other things, the response to the uh, pandemic, uh, churches closing for the first time in the history of Christendom, uh, communion and so on. Now that's obviously upper, uppermost. Uh, it's, it's this great trauma that we haven't quite uh, managed to uh, deal with yet. But also those that are just have a general feeling of, um, what would you call it, a general feeling of, just uneasiness, uh, why the spiritual apathy, why the inactivity in the face of abortion, for instance. Why? Well, and I can identify in that, for me, it was the issue of education. I heard from the pulpit uh, about a sovereign God and had learned in the, how to be catechized, thank God, and I knew about um, God's attributes and so on. And yet, when I went into the world, I just was, I couldn't figure out why Christians were sending baptized children to uh, schools where Christ was not, where God just wasn't important. How can the sovereign creator of the world not be absolutely crucial, the, the first and most important thing in every aspect of education? I, I couldn't express that at the time. And this feeling um, is the awareness of a great um, gulf between uh, church teaching or church practice more and and, uh, and uh, just the world outside me, which weighed upon me. And I couldn't really account for it. I couldn't articulate it. It came across as a angsty, um, angsty feeling of unease. And I want to help folks who are genuinely concerned try to understand where we are and I'm not interested in negative and sterile pointing out other people's wrongs like a discernment blogger I'm not interested in that at all I am interested in trying to build up, build things up now um, what can I say we can say that's the entrance of God's word brings light, Psalm 119, verse 130. And in your light, we see light, Psalm 36, verse 9. There is an answer. We don't have to live with having this sense of unease. There is an answer. The answer uh, that we believe as Protestant Christians in the sufficiency of Scripture throughout time we don't need to invent a new language and no the word of god is sufficient so without further ado let's consider the topic at hand uh, the simple faith or um, the heresy of simplicity was one possible title now i'm not the first person to critique the intellectual prowess of the evangelical church Mark Knoll famously did so in his book, The Scandal of the Evangelical Mind. I haven't read that book. I've heard of it. I believe it came out in the 80s. Now, I'm not trying to say that evangelicals are stupid. Far from it, no. Or more stupid than theological liberals or atheists. Rather, I'm saying that the evangelical faith, as it is presented in the pulpits, is presented as being a simple thing. Now, the intellectuals amongst the Northern Ireland churches, of course the Presbyterians, 
might have a three-point sermon. This is pretty much a gold standard. Uh, but consider this in the light of other ages. Now, I heard this story. I don't. Uh, um, in a, I read this story in a book. I don't have a reference in front of me, but you may not believe it, but I, I certainly believe it's uh, it's characteristic of of a former age. So, parishioners, women in a rural Scottish setting in the nineteenth century would discuss the various points of the sermon as they went about their business, which is remarkable enough. It was seen as something uh, important and uh, of value and relevance. All 43 of those points, that's 43, that's four, three points. So, um, not only was there a lot of content, but it was remembered and discussed now, you might call this excessive, and you might say it's remarkable, but I submit that the Bible is an incredibly complex book without having ever to touch Hebrew or Greek, neither of which I know. They're not, it is not a simple book by any means. So, perhaps we should think a little bit, think twice before uh, insisting on the simplicity of the faith. Now, the, now, what if an elder came to you and said, your child, you are, um, we're going to, we're thinking about bringing you up in charges before the session because your child doesn't know the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Now, the Shorter Catechism was meant for younger children, very young children, and for the mentally impaired. Really, the elder might bring a charge again, the, um, dealing with inability to recite the larger catechism. How would how would you respond to that? How do you think uh, the person sitting next to you in the pew would uh, respond to that? I think it would be disbelief and um, consternation or confusion. Was it, is this, is this a joke? Um, why? Um, it was, it is, the uh, a subordinate standard for the Presbyterian Church, the EPC, the RPCNI, whatever. And yet the, the very thought of the Christian faith as consisting of a body of knowledge that children must, children, even children, especially children, must know is, I submit, totally foreign to the average Christian, or the above-average Christian. Indeed, how many elders in the um, Presbyterian Church would be able to give an account of uh, a reasonable stab at uh, any of the catechism questions and answers outside man's chief end? Now, again, I'm not trying to criticise any particular denomination or any particular church or the Presbyterians, whatever. Oh, no, and I, I'm certainly not saying that they're stupid. That oh, evangelicals are stupid. No, certainly not. The thing is, what I'm trying to get to the heart of, and what I'm trying to establish, is that Christianity is largely conceived of as being a doctrinal, no doctrine, or non doctrinal. The I, okay. If it was a doctrinal conceived of as a doctrinal faith, certainly the catechism would be um, taught. But also, if it was a, a, a body of thought to be mastered, there would be adult training, especially for new members of the faith, but also for, for everybody in general. And this is a feature we see in American some American churches, the adult Bible class. I was surprised uh, hearing that such a thing existed. Anyway, what I'm saying is that the conception of some very able people and um, some very sincere believers, along with everybody else, is that the Christian faith is, by definition, must be, if we're not to stray into error, must be 
a simple faith. I'm not accusing anybody of laziness either, not laziness or stupidity. That is the reigning conception of Christianity, that it is a simple thing. Now, what is, I don't, it's not my intent to survey what the conception or the positive conception of the Christian faith is, but um, you might ask, you know, what are the things that um, you're, uh, you're really quizzed on? Well, your conversion experience, so religious experience, when was it and what happened? And so religious experience, that's important. It used to be that church attendance was important until the lockdowns and then it became less of an issue They're trying to make it an issue again but I think the cat's out of the bag somewhat there and um, let me let me let me hit you with a quote from a recent uh, PCI Council for Public Affairs document talking about abortion mind you the murder of the unborn so it says if we want people to hear us that is uh, discussing Christianity in the public square then we must be able to articulate the Christian faith um, accurately and well? No. Then we must uh, train people to uh, understand the culture in terms of the Christian faith? No. If we want, this is a direct quote, if we want people to hear us, then the look on our faces and our whole demeanour are crucially important. This, I submit to you, is extremely strange and entirely foreign to the Bible and to the historic Christian faith. But it's held up on a very key issue as being the centre of things. So I would maybe classify that as your emotional state or you might say um, a generalised niceness. Not trying to make fun. I think that's an accurate assessment. So the right emotional state is seen as crucial. Interesting. But it has nothing to do with uh, having a, a, a grasp of what is a very complex book and uh, doctrinally um, the, the, the the Christian doctrine is, again, a very complex, specialised thing, which is very difficult to master and which I have not mastered. Now, I was talking to a Bible translator online. I used to work at a, in a very hard station in Africa and her Bible translation project took 30 years to complete, I believe, just the New Testament due to the interruption of various civil wars. So this is no light wit. By any manner of means. This is no uh, Sunday go to meeting uh, churchian. Definitely not. This is somebody who takes Christianity seriously. She's put her money where her mouth is. All right. Now, I was having a to and fro in the comments section and I was being civil. All right. So this is relatively recently. <laughs> And she gently chided me um, for my use of big theological words. I was like, okay, I've got to respect um, my elders and I've got to be gentle uh, and, and so on. So I was trying to apply the Christian faith to the interaction. And I said, I said to her, well, how could you do your Bible translation work without knowing or using linguistic terms or uh, theological well uh, linguistic terms let's think about linguistics now linguistics I, I it's something I did a four-week course on I have taught languages and I know a little about some aspects of linguistics but I know enough to realize that I know very little uh, of the jargon and even within Wycliffe uh, which I work with for a couple, few years I know that um, uh, some are owls, ordinary working linguists, and some are just mamma mia. They're um, connoisseurs of the uh, of the linguistics world. world they can uh, eat, and sleep, and dream linguistics. Of course, the question was unanswerable. She couldn't do a thing. She couldn't do a day's work. 
Uh, she couldn't start her work without knowing and being fluent in all those linguistic categories. Impossible to do to engage in any serious dis- discipline without knowing the pro- professional jargon. And um, of course, you believe me, but uh, try uh, helping out with a diesel fitter and passing them tools <laughs> if you don't know the jargon. Good luck. Now, clearly the problem is not one of brains. And I used to work with Wycliffe. Wycliffe have, uh, has the greater, greatest number or percentage of PhDs per member of any mission organisation. But their conception of the faith, and I discovered this while, while overseas, is really essentially no different. Um, I went, it wasn't just Wycliffe members, it was, uh, I went to a retreat on a beach in the north of Senegal and the sermon um, from missionaries was essentially a restatement of the poor boy's driven loaf. Um, (laughs) Very strange, very strange indeed. It's not, these guys weren't stupid and they certainly didn't lack conviction and commitment and enthusiasm. Not at all. Again, this speaks to a conception of what the Christian faith is, the paradigm of what uh, Christianity is. And the paradigm determines more than intellect and more than enthusiasm what one is able to see. And until you change the paradigm of what the Christian faith is, nothing will change, no matter how much money you put into it, no matter how much enthusiasm you might demonstrate, none of it will make a blind bit of difference, I want to submit. All right. So, it's not the time to look into the causes of uh, this incorrect conception of the Christian faith, because if we have the Bible being a complex book, very simply, an incredibly complex uh, book, the the doctrines of the uh, of the Christian theology being incredibly complex and and difficult and numerous and deep, then. We simply cannot conceive of the Christian religion as being simple. And we'll see what follows. Okay, but um, take the book of Romans, for instance. If we, to the extent that we cannot intelligently um, understand the arguments, the twos and fro's uh, happening in the uh, 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 as, he, as he develops the theme in the book of Romans, to that extent, we are illiterate. But not mastering the book of Romans, some have, of course, without, um, that that doesn't really bother us because when we read the Bible, I submit that by and large, we go there for our religious experience, for a feeling, or maybe as a ritual. Okay, I'm going to do my Bible reading, going to do my quiet time. Nothing wrong with reading your Bible, of course, but... Reading without understanding for years on end. Well, we wouldn't read a uh, a philosophy textbook like that, of course, or uh, a, a diesel fitter's manual. You know. we, 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 would be called, we would be called crazy for spending time without improving or mastering. We say, we should move on to something else, you know. But the paradigm has us trapped so that we cannot see the uh, inconsistency, see the uh, essential ridiculousness of of uh, going to a book that, you know, it's not to say that uh, we haven't, uh, that, that, that uh, we have to master every nook and cranny, but we better jolly well be trying, surely. But at any rate, um, so I want to briefly reflect now on some of the implications of having a simple faith. First one, and this may seem harsh, and it's not my purpose, my goal to be harsh, but look around you. In Northern Ireland, we're killing children in the womb. More children have died, more people have died 
from abortion than ever died in the Troubles in the space of a year or so. Okay, first point. If we maintain that the Christian faith is a simple faith, and we're very dogmatic about that sometimes, a simple faith. First point, total irrelevance. Total irrelevance. And I mean total irrelevance. Why? Look around you, the world is complex. We face everyday issues of law. Right and wrong, justice, um, politics, economics, even philosophy questions of meaning. You know, even if it's asking yourself, why am I doing this job? Or what, what, what's, what's the purpose of it all? I don't care if you've been to the big school, or you've been to grammar school, or been to university. Life is no less complex in the farm, substantially more complex, uh, or in business than um, in your regular sort of um, white-collar job. Complex, complex, complex. By definition, a Christian faith, and I, 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 I hesitate to call it that, that is conceived of as simple, cannot simply cannot be relevant to a complex world. It's baked into the cake. Just because we declare the Christian faith to be uh, simple, A, does not make it so, but it doesn't change the world and its complexities. It's just, the world goes on spinning. So, life is complex, it's sophisticated, and it requires sophisticated a sophisticated understanding to understand it and then further sophisticated and complex reasoning to be able, to be able to answer those questions and believe me the questions are there and they're answered they're answered in christian doctrine which needs to perhaps to be applied afresh they're answered in the bible or examples of it in the bible no doubt but if we are doggedly insistent that the Christian faith is simple, how are we meant to address the needs of the world, address, apply the Christian faith? How are we meant to, to disciple the nations and teach them all things whatsoever God has commanded them? Impossible, by definition. Second point. And this is striking. This will be shocking. But it is true. Not nice, but it is true. Syncretism. A simple faith cannot be a faith for all of life. That's what the, that's what the Christian religion is. Now, Islam doesn't claim to be a faith for all of life. If you go to an Islamic country, you'll find that... Um, Islam is like a uh, beneath, beneath it you have what might be called folk Islam but certainly as I experienced it uh, there was a lot of spiritism let's just call it baked into the cake alright um, well what is the so you have a, a faith for heaven you have a faith uh, that stretches to religious, religious experience and Perhaps you have done your, your homework and uh, you can apply the faith to the church. You can talk about, um, you know, why I'm a Baptist, why I'm a Presbyterian and not a da 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 Well, you've, you've gone several steps beyond most, but what about life? What about uh, your work? Real complex issues in, there, in your work. Ethics. All right. If we have this thin, this, this small uh, handkerchief, it's not going to serve as a blanket. So we're going to have to go and make a patchwork. And that patchwork will have to be borrowed from other religions. Questions of ethics are ultimately religious questions. Now, it might be obscured by the fact that uh, most religions, Buddhism, for example, are philosophical in orientation. 
Nonetheless, our religions, the leading religion in Northern Ireland, as in the West and most of the world, is, of course, humanism, which is a non-theistic religion, or a, not a non-supernatural religion, as, again, many religions are in the world. But if we say the Bible has nothing to say about politics, keep politics and religion separate, congratulations. You have opened the door for the devil. And I mean that quite literally when I think of Marx. Richard Wurmbrandt wrote a book, Marx and Satan. Read it. It's available freely online. Literally. And so many of the political philosophers and so on are, are bad, bad folks. Oh, he said economics. The Bible has nothing to say about economics. It's a simple faith. It's to do with getting to heaven. Congratulations. You have opened the door to, again, Marx and his economics. Who else can we go to? Oh, Keynes. Keynesianism. A pederast. Congratulations. Is Christ honoured in this? No. Is the Bible really silent about economics? Absolutely not. But we will be hostile to any suggestion of its relevance if this paradigm of the simple religion dominates our thinking. Or, let's say it, lack of thinking or lack of Christian thinking. So, again, we've got this patchwork quilt. That's what the syncretism is. You take a bit here, you bit there. But what does this say about God? He's a partial God. He's concerned with some of life. This is to... Um, you know, I'll go there. But And again, this is by definition. Uh, there is no other option. Either the Christian faith will be relevant to all of life or else we must borrow from other religions, non-Christian religions, anti-Christian religions, anti-theistic religions, anti-Christ religions, be they humanistic or whatever. And when it comes to ethics and law, I mean, that, that, uh, that, takes, a, uh, that takes a biscuit. It is the worst thing in the world, the greatest evil, the, the unforgivable sin to um, um, talk about Christian law, biblical law, God's law. But if we don't go to God for law, where shall we go? Again, we're, Christian faith is a simple faith. We're forced to go elsewhere. Where, where can we go? Natural law? Is nature God? Is nature a being that... Uh, gives laws natural law died with Darwin he killed it then where do we go we are forced, forced to go as we did during the lockdown as we did with abortion to state law in the Bible the state uh, is not mentioned by name as such what we have instead is Caesar Caesar is Lord we have Baal in the Old Testament, Moloch as well. We have it in typical form in Rome, the beast. None of these are positive affirmations of the state. But if we close the door to God and his word on a given issue, we are forced to open the door to another religion called a philosophy. It's still a religion. Final point. If we say that the Christian faith is a simple faith, we cannot function as Christians in the world. Okay, put on an oven glove in one hand, oven glove in the other hand, and uh, you know, try to get dressed. What are you going to look like? Try to go out the door, drive, drive to work. How are you going to fare? in an office, in the farm. You're going to kill yourself if you're doing that, try to do it in the farm. 
you're going to get fired. You're just not going to be able to function. To function, you need all four fingers and your thumb. To say that oh, my hand is a one finger, one thumb hand, and that's the way God made it. Well, that's a lie. It's not true. It's it's against all factuality. Of course, you're being stupid. Did you just pull, pull that out of your ear? Well, is it any difference in our calling the Christian faith a simple faith? I submit that it is not. If we don't have the subtlety of the whole word of God, a complex faith, the body of Christian orthodoxy, a complex body of knowledge, we will be ham-fisted. We will hear the word law and think, okay, religious experience, uh, okay, salvation. Okay, you're talking about salvation by law. Oh, no, uh, of course not. That's that's against, uh, uh, that's, it's not orthodox it's not um into the you know you, you end up um being ham fisted in your uh, ability to understand what's what's going on clumsy all fingers and thumbs we, we simply cannot function it's like uh wearing a scuba scuba gear and uh, trying to be a driving instructor <laughs> Maybe you'll get a laugh out of somebody, but if you persist in trying to do it, you'll be thought a fool. If your only categories are religious experience, um, ritual, going to church, um, what else could we have? Um, the right emotion, as we saw in that document. How far is that going to get you? How far has that got us? Nowhere, of course. The paradigm must change. And I'm not advocating that you sign up and join my team. I'm not advocating that um, you uh, become a super duper reformed Presbyterian, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't want anybody to sign up on my team. I'm interested in the Bible. I'm interested in you knowing and understanding the Bible and being able to o operate as a Christian in the world, for example. That's what I'm interested in. And I submit that. We need to do a lot of soul searching, scripture searching, reflection, prayerful reflection. And um, we will find that uh, we will find nowhere in scripture the simple faith. Yes, for a child, but are you a child? If you kept, uh, maintained your childish levels of vocabulary, a childish understanding, could you function in the world? Likewise, with a childish, simple conception of the Christian faith. If somebody calls you simple, you're not going to like it. It's not something to be sought after. It's an insult. And is not the conception of the Christian faith as a simple faith also an insult to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? I submit that it is. And we'll leave it there. Um, so thanks for listening. I welcome your feedback, should you have any. I'm working on producing better and better videos and uh, um, more relevant videos. And yeah, speak to you soon. I shall say goodbye.